DW Radio, your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to WDW Radio Live. I am Lou Mangello, and this is the WDW Newscast for Wednesday, July 24th, 2013. I'm here to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic to wherever you are with this live weekly video broadcast. Join us every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern over at WDW Radio Live. Also, be sure to check out the podcast, my new Disney in a Minute video series, the blog, discussion forums, photo galleries, my Walt Disney World trivia books, CDs, and more. Again, you can find everything over at www.radio.com. Today's broadcast is brought to you by our friends over at audible.com, where you can get a free audiobook download by visiting audibletrial.com slash wwradio. There's more than 100,000 titles to choose from, a ton of Disney books. I'm actually just starting... the Walt Disney book by Neil Gable, if you want to sort of listen along with me. There's also the Kingdom Keeper series of books, so many other books as well. How to Be Like Walt, another one of my favorites. Again, you can check it out. Sign up for free. Cancel anytime. Audibletrial.com slash WDW Radio. All right, so let's get right into this week's Walt Disney World news. Let's start over in downtown Disney. I should have read my own news tonight because I actually thought about doing the show from downtown Disney But there are changes afoot, because we know lots of changes are coming in anticipation for Disney Springs. There are construction walls up everywhere. Comedy Warehouse, rest in peace, my friend. We had good times together. That building is on its way down. Some of the other buildings are being torn down as well, too. But more importantly, and here's my bit of advice to you, if you're thinking of going to downtown Disney, give yourself some extra time, because parking around downtown Disney just got a little bit, or a lot, more difficult, so you're going to need a little bit more time uh, if you're heading on down there. The lot between Splitsville and Planet Hollywood, lot H, is now closed, right? That's where they're going to build the first of two parking structures. This is going to be closed. That structure isn't going to be open until uh, early 2015. So you have a whole sort of year and a half for that to uh, be under construction. If you do go at night and on weekends when it's most busy, like tonight, uh, you can go and park across Buena Vista Drive. So you can park by Team Disney or the SunTrust Bank. You can walk across. It's about a five-minute walk. Or there's also shuttle service. But the important thing is if you have dinner reservations, if you're going to the movies, if you're going to Splitsville, Lanuba, whatever it may be, definitely give yourself a little or a lot extra time, a lot more traffic, a lot more walking you're going to have to do uh, from where you're going to park a lot more difficult to park, too. All right, let's move from downtown Disney to the parks in general, right? I think we all sort of saw this coming because Disney and AT&T announced today that at and is now the official wireless provider for the Walt Disney World Resort and for Disneyland. So what does that mean to you, other than those of us who are AT&T iPhone customers? at and is now going to sponsor some Disney-created soccer and run Disney events over at Wild World of Sports. Disney's uh, going and going to join AT&T. They're going to be doing a lot of education uh, for cast members about something called It Can Wait, which is obviously about the dangers of texting while driving. Kids and adults don't do it. Cast members are going to have access to new mobile devices. I'm sure you're going to see some iPads and iPhones and maybe some Blackberries uh, in and around the parks to help us as guests sort of navigate the parks better. More importantly, for us as the consumer, they're also going to enhance the guest experience For those of us who are using the smartphones, whether it's a My Disney Experience app or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram, whatever it may be, because what they're doing is they're going to add more than 25 distributed antenna systems. So that what does that mean for you? It's going to increase the wireless capacity in areas with a lot of mobile traffic, so inside the parks. They're going to add more than 350 smaller cells to extend the network connectivity, 10 larger cell sites around the entire resort. Again, that's going to ext- expand the service and the coverage and the bandwidth because sometimes, you know, it's sort of tough to even upload a picture, uh, a picture or a video. There's also going to be 40 repeaters, which is sort of a, di- a device that's going to take the signal, keep it, its signal strength uh, higher as it sort of gets farther away from the tower. Again, enhancing the mobile experience. I think we as AT&T customers, as I am one for a long time, I think we're going to see increased bandwidth. I think we're going to see increased maybe... Um, Technologies that they may even bring to some of the apps. Maybe they'll have AT&T specific apps or services just for AT&T customers. What does this mean in the in long run, though? A better overall experience. You're going to see a lot more of the phones uh, in use inside the parks for a more interactive, 
fuller, richer experience. And please, holding up your iPad to take pictures just doesn't work. Use your phone or a camera. All right, but let's move from Disney World out west. Let's go west, young men, because in just a couple of weeks, my God, this crept up on me, the D23 Expo we know is coming back to the Anaheim Convention Center. And now, today, D23 re released and revealed the new, importantly free, D23 Expo app in both the iTunes and the Google Play Store. So if you're coming out to the event uh, August 9th through the 11th, included in the app, and this is the, the big thing, there's up-to-date schedules for all presentations. So I think they're going to be able to sort of push that data and update it on the fly because things are subject to change. I think they'll be adding some more things over the next couple of weeks. You can also right now get sneak peeks at merchandise and some of the collectibles that are going to be available for purchase exclusively at the event. Merchandise, a big thing for a lot of people there. I like this too. The ability to push alerts, right, of the latest expo news, announcements, and notifications when panels and presentations are booked up. So if you're thinking about going to a panel in an hour and the line's already booked up, they'll push that notification to you if you want it, right? You can sort of select what you want or don't want so you know, okay, that's full. Let me move on. There's frequently asked questions, a map of the show floor. Dave Smith, man, I love that guy. Tons of Disney trivia provided by Dave Smith bios of the talent that's going to be attending the expo. There's also a photo booth, a scavenger hunt, lots more. I've been playing around with the app on my phone for a lot of the day today. Um, it's been re it's not really a time waster. It's more like research. Uh, I think the app is very, very well done. It's very solid. It's very stable. It loads fast. I'm on an iPhone 4S. It loads very quickly. Uh, it's easy to navigate, right? That's what I like too. It's very, very easy to understand, easy to navigate. And look, if, if you're thinking about coming out to the expo, there's still time. I just booked my tickets like two days ago. I kid you not, my plane tickets. Tickets for the expo are $57 for one day for an adult. Uh, if you are members of D23, it's $50. There's multi-day money-saving tickets as well too. You can find out more, obviously, by visiting d23expo.com. Every day, every week, they're revealing new things. Again, I've said it from the very beginning, something for everyone over at the expo. Really excited. We are once again, and when I say we, I mean WW Radio, me, and Mouse Fan Travel, we're joining forces, right? It, it's it's Ebony and Ivory coming together, cats and dogs living together. We are going to have a monster booth in the Collector's Forum once again. If you're coming out to the Expo, come by and, bi and visit. Be part of the show. We're going to have contests, giveaways, some exclusive interviews. We're going to be broadcasting all three days, August 9th through the 11th. So if you can't make it out there, you're saying, Lou, what about me? I'm stuck here in my cubicle or in the frozen tundra. I know it's almost August, but it's the frozen tundra of wherever you are. That's okay, because I am going to bring the expo to you. D23ExpoLive.com. We're going to have live broadcasts for all three days. Lots of special content, interviews, guests, contests, even for those of you who are watching, and opportunities for you to be part of the show. Be part of the fun as well, too. Again, that's August 9th through the 11th at D23 Expo Live. When I say broadcast, I mean like this. Video broadcast, chat, we've done it the last two expos, had a great time, loved seeing people watch on Friday and fly in on Saturday because they saw all the fun they were missing. Again, you can find that over at D23ExpoLive.com and more information about the expo itself is at D23Expo.com. A couple of other bits of news and housekeeping today, right? I announced it last week, but today, Tickets for the first part of our e-ticket weekend went on sale, right? We are going to have the ultimate dinner and a movie in the movies at the Great Movie Ride. We're going to have a private dinner and show and some surprises and, of course, dessert inside the Great Movie Ride Friday, October 4th from 8 to 10 p.m. It is going to be one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities to have dinner inside one of the classic, iconic Walt Disney World attractions. It is just going to be the start of what is going to be a fun-filled weekend. We're going to have a number of other events. On Saturday, we're going to do something in or around Epcot, around the Food and Wine Festival. And Sunday, our inaugural great move, uh, sorry, miniature golf tournament. If you are thinking about coming to the Great Movie Ride event, visit www.radio.com slash eticket2013. Uh, tickets went on sale today. If it keeps going at this rate, they are not going to last till the end of the week. They are very, very limited in number. It is going to be a small, intimate event. 
So if you're thinking about coming, I suggest you get your tickets right now. Again, all the details can be found on the events page or by visiting www.radio.com slash eticket2013. And again, stay tuned for more information about other events as well. That is going to do it for this week's portion of the WW Newscast. Thanks so much for watching and joining in. If you missed the show live, you can catch it on YouTube or the audio in the iTunes feed or on the WW Radio blog. I'd love to hear and read your comments, either on YouTube or on the blog. Let me know what you think about the expo, the changes coming to downtown Disney as part of Disney Springs, and how the parking may affect things over the next couple of months. Christmas time, I think, is going to be a little rough over at uh, downtown Disney, but still, it uh, it's a great place and a great time to go, just to afford yourself a little bit of extra time. Uh, other than that, be sure and follow me over on Twitter. I'm at Lou Mangiello and Facebook.com slash Lou Mangiello. You can subscribe to my updates right there. Uh, that is going to do it for this week. Make sure you join us next week at, at WDW Radio Live, Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Once again, I am Lou Mangiello from WDW Radio. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week, everybody. So until next time, see ya. Thank you.